what are the question, equations of motion. And then we have seen that properties of our continuum medium can be described in two different fashions. One is the material, in which it describes properties in terms of the particles, essentially. And the other one is the spatial description, or Eulerian, so called, where we describe the properties in terms of points of the space. Okay? Both describe, describe the same properties in a different mathematical way. That's the difference. Okay. But this also raises another issue. If I can describe the same property in two ways, for instance, imagine I have a certain generic properties, which is gamma, the property gamma, which is described in terms of, um, in, the, in material description as a certain function, gamma capital, of the particles identified by their label, which is here in canonical description, the material coordinates and time. So that, every time I put here some numbers, some figures in the arguments, then I obtain a result which expresses something. What is it something? The property gamma of that particle x at time t. But I could do that in another way, which is the spatial description of the same property. Por property. Gamma, small, small gamma. That follows the rule that, in general, spatial properties will be described by, by small letters to describe the function. In that case, I know how to write small gamma and, and capital gamma. So that, when I put some figures here, I obtain some, some result. And the result is the property gamma of that particle that, at times t, is at the, spa at the, at the space point, at the, at the point uh, small x. Okay? That is that. But in, all, in both cases, I obtain the value of gamma, of the property. But now, sometimes, we, have, we want to follow the evolution along time of properties. So we are not, sometimes we're interested not only in what is the property, for what is the density. But we, we are also interested in the evolution along time of the density, the derivatives, the time derivatives, the, the, the rate of change in terms of time of that property. And this raises the following issues. Look, if I have the material description of the property, I can take the partial derivative with respect to time, just derivative with respect to time, and I obtain some value. Also, having the spatial description of the same property, but in a spatial description, from this mathematical expression, I take the partial derivative with respect to the fourth argument, with respect to time, and then obtain the same value. These values, these two values, do they represent the evolution of the property in the same way? What do they represent, in fact? So let's first consider this one. If I take the derivative, you know the derivative? How do we obtain a derivative, a partial derivative of a function? We freeze, we just co consider fix the arguments, these arguments, and then we consider that function for t plus delta t minus that function for t. We divide by delta t, and the result is what we call the partial derivative with respect to t. Maybe you remember that from your calcul calculus uh, lessons in, in your, in your uh, degree. Well, this mathematically is the partial time derivative of the material description. Okay? But what is that given, in fact? In fact, since I'm keeping constant in that evaluation of the change, I'm keep keeping constant the capital X. I mean that I'm keeping constant the, proper, the, the, the particle. So the result, what this derivative, partial derivative of capital gamma with respect to T, this would, would, this would return the change, the rate of change, the speed of change of the property for particle kappa and time t. But particle capital X, sorry, and time t. So it's given me 
the rate of change of the property for a given material point, for a given particle. If this, the result of that is two, that means that that particle, that particle that I am following in the material description is changing the, 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 the property, whatever it is, at a speed of two. But that particle, a particle, okay? But what happens if I take the derivative of the spatial description, which is a function of the, of the spatial coordinates and t, with respect to t? I again do the same. I keep capital X fixed, a small x fixed, and I see how much is the value of gamma at t, how much is at t plus delta t, an infinitesimal change uh, later, I divide, I subtract them, I look for the change, and I divide them by the, the delta t, okay? So, that's what mathematically means the partial derivative of this function with respect to t. But in fact, the result, what did it say? It says, look, since the small x is changing, it's saying how much changes the property gamma, not at one particle, but at one special point. So, in fact, what, what, what I do when I measure the gamma property at a small x point is that considering a time, at that time and seeing what is the particle that is here at that special point at this time and measuring the property of this particle at this time. When I took, want to measure this particle, this property, at a subsequent time, small enough, at this change of time, another particle came to that point. So it's another particle which is there. It's not the same particle. The same particle, the particle that I am changing, that I am, that I am measuring, when I do t plus delta t, uh, sorry, uh, exactly, t plus delta t, at this t plus delta t, at this specific uh, spatial point, there is another particle. And I measure the density of this other particle. Okay? So the result gives me what is the rate of change of the property, not for a given particle, but for a given spatial point, in terms of the, 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 that the spatial point is allocated the property of the particles that are occupying this point long time. So that is not the same. That doesn't mean the same physically. So if I want to measure how does the property change the, uh, for a given particle, I have to take partial derivatives of the material description with respect to time. If I want to measure how much is a given property changing in a fixed point of a space, which is occupied by different particles a long time, then that I, don't I don't have to take this derivative. I have to take that derivative. So obtain the spatial description and take, and take the time. So that is what that derivative is called the material derivative. Again, you saw the word material said that is giving me the change of the material, of the particle. And this is termed the local derivative. Local meaning local space, a specific point of space. And this returns what is the change of the property in a given point of space. So there are different names for these different two, two different time derivatives. Okay? So that's the concept. I mean, this uh, subject is plenty of these subtle issues. Okay? And the exams, in many times, you are requested to, to answer this. Okay? The, that, that specific derivative, what is the meaning? Is the meaning that the change of the <laughs> derivative that uh, at time zero was, uh, so you, give, you are given certain options and you have to choose the right ones. These concepts, you have to have them very clear. Okay? That is what is important in them. Because from these concepts, you would obtain at the end, you will elaborate these concepts to get physical and meaningful concepts of engineering issues, okay? So that is, that, that, that is not a trivial issue, understanding what is the physics behind that expression and what is the physics behind this expression. Yeah.